Demi Lovato is a multifaceted woman. Over the years, we've learned so much about her character and what's behind the singer and actress. She stripped down and showed us the real Demi, the one who deals with daily struggles within herself, from drug and alcohol addiction to love and broken hearts. Her brand new album, Tell Me You Love Me, was just released and we get to learn a little bit more about her, who she likes to listen to while getting it on, and what celebrity one of her songs could be about. I have 12 surprising facts about Demi Lovato coming right up. Talk that talk, baby. Better walk, better walk that walk, baby. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Azalea Hart. What is your favorite thing about Demi Lovato? Is it her singing? Her acting? Maybe it's her strength. Whatever it is, comment it down below and let me know. If it's your first time here, please subscribe and turn on your bell notifications. That way you never miss when I upload a new episode. Here's a fun fact before we get into the list. Did you know that Demi was so embarrassed to sing Cool for the Summer at the Nordic State Dinner at the White House? She said that she purposely left that song out of the set list because who wants to sing that song in front of the Flotus and POTUS? Michelle Obama requested it, so she did sing it, but she did not look either of them in the eyes. And the line where she says, shh, don't tell your mother, she changed it to, shh, don't tell the president. <laughs> All right guys, that was just one quick fun fact. I have way more for you, so let's get into the list. So it's absolutely no secret that Demi has been through a lot in her life, and I will delve a little bit deeper into this a little bit later. But she teamed up with director Shaul Schwartz as the executive producer for a documentary called Beyond Silence that follows the lives of three individuals living well with mental illnesses, including bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, depression, and anxiety. In the description of the documentary, it says that it celebrates the strength, perseverance, and dedication of the three people involved to break through the silence often associated with mental illness and help others along the way. You can get more info at bevocalspeakup.com slash documentary. As I mentioned before, Demi has not kept it a secret that she struggled with her own mental health, especially when it comes to self-harm, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, bulimia, or bipolar disorder. She said that every day is a battle. Some days are easier than others, and some days you forget about drinking and using. She said, I work on my physical health, which is important, but my mental health as well. You know, making sure that I'm taking care of myself, making sure that I am raising my voice for other people, and it's had a positive impact on me. What is she doing to stay healthy though? Demi sees a therapist twice a week, she makes sure she stays on her medications, she goes to AA meetings, and she also does what she can physically, like making going to the gym a priority. Most recently, Demi has been named the new mental health ambassador for Global Citizen. This will allow her to work on specific projects focused on breaking silence and stigma often attached with discussing mental health to call on governments around the world to prioritize mental health as a key agenda. But it wasn't an easy road for Demi at all. Her family and friends have tried to intervene multiple times with no success, but there was a breaking point for them, and I think this time, it worked. Demi recalls in an interview how her family and friends finally had enough. They told her that this time they aren't going to leave, but they are in fact leaving. She said in that moment, she thought to herself, okay, I really need to get help and get sober. At this point, she knew that she had definitely hit rock bottom. Her parents had told her that she wasn't allowed to be around her little sister as long as she was doing drugs and harming herself. When I was younger, I was dealing with bipolar depression and it was very severe and I didn't know what was wrong with me. Demi has obviously made a complete 180 as I've mentioned so far in this video. She even co-owns a treatment center. You know, it is a physical illness, it's your brain, um, but you know, it's just like diabetes. You, you have to find the right treatment for for what you have. So Netflix is known to have the best documentaries. I've watched a few in the past couple weeks, one being the Khalif Browder story, the Lady Gaga documentary, as well as the Chris Brown documentary. But this month coming out is Demi Lovato's. 
Simply Complicated will come out this month on October 17th and will give us fans a raw and intimate look into her life. Some days my life feels like a playground, while others a battlefield. It's going to touch on subjects like her journey to becoming sober, her breakup with her boyfriend of six years, Wilmer Valderrama, and a closer look at Demi's battle with substance abuse and eating disorders. So it's me, you know, dreaming of the future and looking back on all that I've accomplished. It was major entertainment news a year ago when Demi tweeted that she is so excited for 2017, but will be taking a break from music and the spotlight. She continued on tweeting that she is not meant for this business and the media. When asked why and what she plans to do, she said it doesn't feel worth it anymore and that she would rather do charity work, to be honest. But that break didn't really happen, did it? Here's why. Demi said, I got a Grammy nomination and I felt like it was God's way of saying, you're on the right path. Stay strong at what you do and work hard. I got fed up with the media twisting my words and making me sound a certain way. Fast forward to a year later, which is right now, Demi has released her new album, Tell Me You Love Me. She said that she doesn't have much fun singing the pop songs, so this album leans more towards a slick modern R&B sound, but she hasn't completely abandoned her pop roots. She did say though that she wanted her own version of Christina Aguilera's stripped album, basically a coming of age album. going from Disney to full-blown, grown, and sexy woman. Christina's stripped album cover even influenced Demi's black and white album cover. Demi says that no one has heard anything quite like this one, and she said, I've got this super personal song that I'm nervous about people hearing for the first time. Fun fact about the song that she's talking about, mm, well, not so fun, but she said she recorded it halfway in tears. She also has some words of advice. One of the most important rules that I live by, she says, today is to always speak your mind and always stand up for the things you believe in. Those two things give your career and your life purpose. Debbie may be a proud LGBTQ supporter, but is she part of that community? Ooh. Well, Demi may share a lot with the public and her fans, but this is something she isn't willing to share, unless it's on her own terms. Demi says that she wants to be known for her art, not her sexuality. She's accepted the Glad Vanguard Award, which is a media award presented by the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. It is presented to a member of the entertainment community who has made a significant difference in promoting equal rights for LGBTQ people. Thank you to um, my love that can't be here tonight. I'm just extremely proud of him, but um, his name is Wilmer Valderrama and I'm so proud to be his girlfriend. And Demi has quite the sense of humor because when she accepted the award from one of her best friends, Nick Jonas, she made a crack on his, um, woohoo. But I actually have a bigger dick than he does. Demi's song from 2015, Cool for the Summer, is pretty much talking about having fun with another girl. But she was also in a six year relationship with Wilmer Valderrama and has been linked romantically to Joe Jonas. Guillerme Bomba Vasconcelos, and Luke Rockhold. Don't kill me if I mess up that guy's name. Honestly, don't. She says if you do want to know, she answers a lot of questions in her new documentary. Demi's first single off her new album is Sorry Not Sorry, and the music video is pretty epic. It's basically the house party that we all wish we were invited to. Now payback is a bad bitch, and baby, I'm the baddest. You fucking with a savage, can't have this, can't have this. Footage was from a real house party. It wasn't, but it was inspired by a real house party that she threw. Demi told Jimmy Fallon that she told her friends that she wanted to meet some new people since she was newly single, so she wanted to have a few people over. A couple hours later, Snoop Dogg was there with French Montana, Wiz Khalifa, and Ty Dolla Sign. House, no, I was like, okay, Snoop, do what you want. Yeah. And then my chef came in the next morning and was like, it smells like Snoop Dogg was here. I was like, no, he literally <laughs> was. It said that what sparked Demi's decision to take a break from music and come out of the spotlight was actually after an interview that she had with Glamour Magazine where she talked about Taylor Swift. In the interview, Demi touched on what it is to be a feminist, which she said she believes in gender equality. She went on to say that Taylor Swift doesn't act on being a feminist, even though she promotes it. 
She gave nods to other women in the entertainment community like Lena Dunham and Beyonce who make political statements through their work. When it comes to T-Swift though, Demi said for one, her squad doesn't include anyone with a normal body shape and that it's a false image of what people should look like and be like and it just isn't real. She also spoke on Taylor's Bad Blood video saying that it doesn't represent women empowerment at all as it's reportedly about tearing down Katy Perry. But when the backlash became too much, she tweeted this. I get asked questions. I answer them. Sue me. Also, don't forget that words can be taken out of context when doing interviews. I'm still not apologizing for saying what everyone wants to say. She then continued on saying, I don't understand why people care so much about what I say in interviews. Do y'all watch the news? Do y'all got shit to worry about? And of course, that was followed by her announcement that she was taking a break. Demi and Nick Jonas are seriously BFF goals. Seriously. They've been friends for over 10 years and it all started on the Disney Channel with Camp Rock. They did have a bit of a hiatus from 2010 to 2012 though because Demi was struggling with her personal demons at the time. While on tour with the Jonas Brothers, Demi got into a fight with one of the dancers and Nick was really, really mad about it. <laughs> She said she distanced herself after that and after treatment, she had to have some time sober before she wasn't embarrassed to talk to him. She said they reunited after her concert in LA, they caught up after the show and after an emotional reunion, she got one of her best friends back. When it comes to the relationship and what's so special about it, Demi said this. There's an element of trust that you don't find with people nowadays. He's family. I am the person who tells him things he doesn't want to hear. Like I told him to be more vulnerable with his music and I was like, let people see how funny you are. I want the world to be able to laugh the same way I do when I'm around him. So close. Oh, I want you close. And if you're wondering, yes, they definitely are each other's wing woman and wing man. They help each other pick up people all the time. But is it all a facade? Is she willing to ruin that friendship? One of the songs on Demi's new album is called Ruin the Friendship and it's all about making a move on a close friend. She said she wrote it about a certain friendship that she has with someone and she wants to ruin that with them. Yes, you heard me correctly, she wants to ruin the friendship. She said it's been a long time coming and she sent the person the song and found out that that person also had a song that they wrote about her. So they exchange songs. Notice though that she never said he or she, she just said they. So who knows who it could be? Either way, fans are speculating that it is about Nick Jonas. She sings, put down your cigar and pick me up. Play me your guitar, that song I love. Thirsty for your love, fill up my cup. Your body's looking good tonight. I'm thinking we should cross the line. Let's ruin the friendship, what's taken us all this time. And can we point out here that Nick is a cigar aficionado and plays the guitar? Hmm. I should reveal that he enjoys listening to his own music when he's getting busy in the bedroom, but Demi said, nah, that's super weird. I don't want to hear myself. So who does she prefer? Demi says that when it comes to baby making music, the weekend all the way. You talking money, need a hearing aid. You talking about me, I don't see the shade. Switch on my side, I take any lane. I switch on my car if I kill any pain. So we all know by now that Selena Gomez and Demi first met on Barney and Friends when they were really, really, really young, right? Yeah, these two go all the way back before the Disney Channel fame. When it comes to Demi's type of men, she says that she has always gone for ones older than she is. And apparently she knew this by the time she was eight years old because she had a crush on the guy inside the Barney suit. She said he was jacked. That's it for this episode, 12 surprising facts about Demi Lovato. Did you learn anything new? If you want to see more episodes about celebrities, click right on over here. And if you want to see more about Disney, click down there. You can subscribe by clicking this A right here, and I'll see you guys next time.